Hello, just wanted to give you an update on my recent installation of the Battleborn 100 amp lithium batteries that I put in my 2016 Rotrek Simplicity motorhome. I replaced a 100 amp AGM lead acid type battery. And so far I am tickled pink with how these things are working. A good example is last night I ran the TV for about five hours and a couple of microwave dinners. Also ran the heater at about 70 degrees, although it only got down to 50 last night, so it wasn't very cold. Ran the refrigerator all night long. Got up this morning and did a couple of microwave breakfasts. Ran the TV another couple hours worth of news. And let's see how we're doing right now. So we're running about 70, 69, 70 percent of the battery's capacity. So that means that we used about 60 amps worth of power last night out of the 200 amps. So as you can see, I can go all day without starting my engine. The old batteries, if I got up in the morning, I had to start the engine to work the microwave. They were just about depleted. One thing that I want to tell you that I had to do was with the battery separator. This was the original separator that came in the motorhome and it is the 1315 200 amp separator. This is a bi-directional separator which means it will close both ways. If it senses the voltage being over 13.2 from the house battery it will it will close so that the start battery is charged. If it senses 13.2 coming from the start battery, it will close the contacts so that the house battery is being charged. The problem I had with that is that the lithium batteries would keep the house battery at 13.2 even when you shut off the engine, so the separator never would disconnect. I don't know if that's a problem, but I just didn't want the lead acid battery of the car always connected to the lithium batteries and so I got looking at it and basically it is just a continuous duty solenoid with the battery contacts. Let me see if I can get in here and show you that. Down here in the bottom you'll see those two little bolts. That's just the contacts that will engage the solenoid close the battery contacts on top there and if you look at that you could just remove those bolts and take it off so that's what I did this just happens to be another one here you can see that the uh, that the brains of this separator comes right off so you end up with just a continuous duty isolator nothing very smart but what it does if you connect power and ground to these little terminals down here, it closes the contacts. So that's what I did. From my cigarette lighter, which is on the ignition, it comes on power with the ignition when you turn it on, I ran a wire across the dash. Now this is probably hard to see, but let me get over here and I'll show you. I ran that wire over here and I went through a switch. This one down here. Okay, the reason uh, I went through the switch is I don't know if I always want the isolator to be connected when I'm running the engine. Maybe my house battery is completely depleted. I might want to start the engine without the separator engaging and then turn it on manually afterwards. So anyway, that's why I did it. But I ran that wire from the cigarette lighter that's keyed to the ignition comes through this switch and then it runs down to the positive side of that that isolator down there the negative side is grounded to the frame so now when I start my engine up the isolator just kicked on and these two will balance out the house battery and the start battery. And as the alternator kicks in, 
they both go up together. The reason for that little switch right there is just to be able to turn off this because it's always on hot. I just ran that from uh, the top side is coming from the car side and the bottom of the voltmeter is coming from the house batteries. But that's basically how that works. It's very simple to do. Let me show you right here really quickly. You can take this out. There's two screws right there. There's also a cover plate right there. You pop that cover plate off. There's two more screws up here. Then you can grab this right here in the corner. You can pop it out. This whole thing comes off the front. You can access that. You can access that cigarette lighter right there fairly easily. Okay, back to this for just a minute. Right now my ignition is on. And you can see that the two batteries are connected, the house battery and the start battery. And so I can turn off my little switch right here and it disconnects them. Now the start battery is going back to its resting voltage, the house battery is sitting at its resting voltage and the isolator kicked off. If I, the ignition is on, if I turn the switch on again, you're gonna hear it. Hear that little click? That click connects the two batteries together and they'll both come up to be equal voltage again or close to it. I'll do that one more time. There it's off, 12.4, 13.2. Turn on my little isolator. Heard that click, that brings it up. Now when I shut off the ignition, which I'm doing right now, you can see that the isolator kicks off and the batteries are no longer connected. I kind of like this system better. All right, one thing that you might want to be aware of though, if you're doing this on your motor home, is to contact Battleborn and I'd also contact Rotrek and talk to them, although they didn't give me any encouragement at all about putting lithium into their uh, Rotrek, they said stick with the lead acid, uh, but that's another story. Anyway, if you have an underhood generator, I'd make sure you really talk to everyone about that because the underhood generator is just going back to feed the house batteries. Battleborn batteries have a switch, it has a battery monitoring system, and there's a switch in there that uh, if it's overcharged or it's too cold it won't allow it to be charged and I understand if you stop charging a battery with an alternator that you could burn the diodes out in the alternator now because I don't have an underhood generator and everything is connected to my one alternator that one alternator is always sending charge to the lead acid battery and I believe that acts as a lead sink if you will for the um, alternator so even if the battleborn batteries would shut down and not allow charge to them the alternator on my machine is still charging the lead acid batteries but i just wanted to give you this update i'm really happy with them everything's been working out great and uh, if you have any questions you can give me a comment in the bottom and i'll be happy to try and answer it for you um, Again, check with Battleborn, check with Rotrek, make sure what you want to do is going to work for you. Thank you for watching.